So, I brought you guys on the show because I did the last show by myself, so I thought I'd overcompensate. <laughs> yeah. On the next show. And out. the reason that I brought you on is because we're going to be talking about The Evil Dead. Hooray! Hooray! Hooray. Yeah. Which is a great film. And one that myself and Tom have actually covered before. Yeah. But Get a little bit sick of Evil Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we thought, fuck it, we'll yeah. just do it again, because why not? Um, so, in case you have not, for whatever reason, seen The Evil Dead before, I find that very hard to believe that anyone is going to listen difficult. to the show who hasn't seen it before. But in case you haven't, we're going to be talking in quite heavy spoilers and shit. So, uh, The Evil Dead is directed by Sam Raimi, who is quite a well-known director now, mostly for directing Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3. Mm-hmm. Less said about Spider-Man 3, the better. <laughs> we don't talk about Spider-Man but The best Spider-Man film. <laughs> <laughs> um, he also directed Drag Me to Hell. Hooray! Which yeah. I quite liked. I thought it was quite cool. Very, very old school Sam Raimi, yeah. Yeah. And A Simple Plan, which I quite mm. liked. Very similar to Fargo. And... Yeah, it's quite interesting. So this film also, it's mainly known for introducing Bruce Campbell into the world. And his main character that he's best known for, Ash. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Bruce Campbell is quite well known, sort of B-movie actor. He's also been in films like Maniac Cop, which I like. Yeah, yeah. And Baba Hotep. And the Spider-Man trilogy. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> good. Yeah, I Including don't, the third. <laughs> very good in the third. Yeah. <laughs> um, although, I mean, they are only really cameos, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. And also in this film is uh, Ellen Sandweiss, who plays Cheryl, who is Ash's sister. She is one... Now, she's credited in the remake of Evil Dead as a voice, yeah. but I'm mm. not entirely sure when that would be. I haven't seen the remake for about a year, so yeah. about, apparently she's in there. Um, and also she's in Oz the Great and Powerful, as are the other two actresses in this film. I think they're in a small cameo-like role uh, in uh, that film uh. somewhere. What a weird connection between the Evil Dead and the Oz. Yeah, although it's directed by Sam Raimi, mm. so that would be why they're in it. Um, the I other did two, like that film. The other two actresses are Betsy Baker, who plays Linda, who's Ash's girlfriend, and Teresa Tilly, who is Shelley, who is the girlfriend of Scotty, who's played by Richard DeMancourt. I think that's how, what his guy's name is. Now, quite interestingly, uh, Richard DeMancourt and Teresa Tilly are not credited under those names. They are actually credited under pseudonyms. And the reason for that is because they were members of the Screen Actors Guild, and this was a non-union production, and they thought they would get in trouble. Naughty, naughty. If they appeared in this film. So that's why they're in, you know, go under pseudonyms. And wouldn't they think they, there's a possibility that there might be a slightly dodgy film that they were going to make? So they took their boyfriends with them. Just in case it turned out Sam Raimi was making a snuff film or a porno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that story about how people thought they were making a snuff film. As you do, you would have open casting. So Sam Hanks Raimi right. had to completely change his film and it's now no longer a snuff film, which is a shame. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, interestingly, this cost only $350,000, which Nothing. is fuck all, really. It's Chump really. change. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, Scott. We'll yes. pick you. Scott, what happens in The Evil Dead, for those of you who don't know? Okay, so let's uh, say a, t- uh, a gang of teenagers go for a nice relaxing break to a cabin in the woods. Yep. Hilarity ensues. <laughs> 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 they do things they're not supposed to do. They go places they're not supposed to go. And yes, exactly. They, yeah, it hilarity does, ensues. It doesn't ensues. follow the trope of like, oh, they're smoking weed and having premarital sex. They're pretty innocent. Yeah. They just get fucked with. <laughs> Although we did notice that there's a hell of a lot of moonshine being yeah, plugged. There's a lot of moonshine so being may- drunk in the car, at the dinner table, yeah. you know. And as seeing as I've uh, got an unofficial uh, election of having moonshine as my official drink of 2019, yeah. because as we established, it's going to be a terrible year, so you might as well start drinking the hard stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe it's a, a moral tale about the dangers of drinking moonshine. Maybe they imagined everything yeah. that happened to them. They were and what made, me, what, made, what made me laugh was we we when we were watching the uh, or well, you've listened to the ninety eight director's commentary. Uh, Sam Raimi's really worried that everything he thought was timeless fashion and mm-hmm. what teenagers got up to was has kind of even though he was trying to avoid them looking dated by not putting them over stylized seventies eighties clothes. Um, he's saying, oh well, it's kind of all gone out of date anyway. 
but they're all wearing like lumberjack shirts, double denims, corduroys, and they're drinking out of jam jars. Yeah. They look like the most current <laughs> hipsters. <laughs> and nothing, no, Moon Train never goes out of date. <laughs> <laughs> never goes out of It was never in date. <laughs> Indeed. Now, uh, the first thing I wanted to ask, it's quite interesting. So, Scott, you called it Cabin in the Woods, which mm. evoked that specific kind of phrase. Now, that's what the film is known for now. But in 1981, obviously, that wouldn't have existed. So, what is The Evil Dead? Like, how do we categorise it other than that? So, to me, you've got its haunted house mm. of sorts. Yeah. You've got Possession. And it's sort of like a zombie film as well, in a way. It's not like they're undead and they've come back to life, but they mm-hmm. are basically unkillable. Yeah. Although it's not really true zombies. It's more like demons, the Lamberto Barber film. Mm. Yeah. It's, they're kind of more like that. And there's also the comedic elements mm-hmm. as well. So what do you guys think? Well, demonic possession, I guess. Demonic possession is what it is. Then, as you said, they're not zombies. They don't really die, they just get possessed and then won't die. So, it's horror comedy is the easiest way to categorise it, I guess. Yeah. But what is it specifically about? Demonic possession. They got the whole kind of talking in a sing-songy kind of voice, kind of from the exorcist kind of yeah. vibe. And, you know, the kind of playful thing that demons kind of have over mm-hmm. zombies. They're yeah. kind of like, you know, where you know, Freddy is, but yeah, yeah, chuckle, Mr. Chuckles. <laughs> and uh, Jason is your silent, strong silent type. Well, apparently Jason's a dead eye, but we'll get onto that at some yeah. point. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I always, I always enjoy enjoy a demon because they're always up for a, a, a you know, a good a good chuckle. Yeah, you know, and you can get away with whatever you want with demons because nobody really knows what's what what's that about. There's, there's rules to like zombies and stuff, but demons, demon loses its head. Well, or a person possessed by a demon loses their head. They they just keep going, you know. Yeah, I mean, what I like about this film and why it kind of fits in the supernatural horror film is that this is kind of one of those films where eventually the rules of the real world kind of become... uh, They become twisted, Mm -hmm. as you can hear my cat in the background. Um, (laughs) I disagree! The house is demonic possessed, scratching at the door. Yeah, exactly. It's an evil cat sort of trying (laughs) to... Evil cat. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But... For example, like in the second half of the film, like for example, one of my favourite shots in The Evil Dead is where Ash puts his hand into the mirror and it yeah. becomes mm. like water. Now, obviously, that wouldn't happen in real life. No. Unless you're maybe on really strong hallucinogenic <laughs> drugs. And even then you've just punched a mirror. <laughs> really exactly. maybe, maybe that's maybe, maybe there's a scene somewhere where he's chowing down on mushrooms and he's just killed everyone and they're all innocent and the shot you don't see is the police going what happened here son well the bridge is curled up no it's not <laughs> yeah that would actually have been quite an interesting ending I think if yeah. like it all turned out it was some sort of drug induced isn't there a horror film isn't, isn't there shrooms or something oh that's so, a is, crap Irish film isn't that the same ago. kind of thing like the it's a bunch I haven't of, seen it, but I don't they just imagine it. It's basically a bunch of teenagers go to the woods camping and then they take magic mm-hmm. mushrooms and then bad shit goes down. Bad shit yeah. goes down. But I do agree with what you're saying about like the the rules go out the window. And that as I, as I said, that only really happens with demonic possession stuff. Because like so what, have the demons possessed the mirror and turned the mirror into liquid? You can do whatever you want with demons. You can get there, there are no rules really. Yeah. Whereas if that was if this, if you did categorize this as a zombie film, what zombies aren't going to change the mirror into you know water. No, this is kind of one of those films that would annoy people who want everything to be realistic and rational. Mm. No names, <laughs> no names. Um, but like, yeah, because of things like that, because there are things that happen that you can't explain rationally at all. Yeah, yeah. and it just happens cause it looks <laughs> cool. And yeah, exactly. It looks fucking awesome. Yeah, like I said. yeah, like that. But specifically, that mirror thing. So that, it doesn't serve a purpose, even story wise. It's not no. like his hand then. Hit, there's a mirror hand that comes alive or anything. <laughs> it's just, it's just a scene Got put in for the sake of it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just there because it looks cool. Done. Yeah. So we all like this film. Yes. We love it. Absolutely love it. Fucking okay. love it. That's pretty obvious. Okay, what is it that we like about the film specifically? I'll start with Scott on this mm. one. Mm, I would say just like the the you can you can 
not necessarily so you can tell a cheap film sometimes you know oh that's cheap because they're all sat in the same room yeah or you know the effects are terrible i don't think any of the and whereas like you know if you watch it and repeated viewings or you watch it with a director's commentary you say oh he, hey he didn't get out of shot oh i can see the hand flip i've i don't see that stuff mm-hmm. it kind of um you know you can see where the walls end and there's no ceiling things like that and they get pointed out to you in featurettes and now i think anyone's harder on that film than the people that made it yes um but they've got a great sense of humor about it and it kind of doesn't matter it's like seeing a really good band and you know maybe they're not the best at playing their instruments but it's got a real kind of punk aesthetic and you just takes you in and you like i don't really care that they've got no money or that you know you could argue you could nitpick and say well the character's all very bland and maybe that's going to like the aesthetic of um how he didn't want them to age i kind of forget about them and i kind of lose track even though there's five of them Who's died and where and... Who, I lose track of the names and stuff. The yeah. names and things like that, yeah. Um, obviously, I remember Scotty because he's, <laughs> he's got my name, but... That's yeah. shit. <laughs> that's, that's the only reason I remember him. I call them all Tom. And, like, I think Tom would say, like, when you are talking about Ash, this isn't the people's Ash. This is <laughs> yeah. Ash version 1.0. And as Tom pointed out, it's like when people kind of get freaked out about how ugly and unappealing... <laughs> gizmo in, <laughs> in the original gremlins everyone remembers gremlins 2 mm-hmm. gizmo and everyone remembers evil dead 2 ash so yeah i think i mean the film is iconic i any beginner's guide to fucking cult cinema if it doesn't mention evil dead it mentions rocky horror show those are the two <laughs> ones that get forced down your throat over and over again but with evil dead i'd say for very bloody good reasons it's very creative when you watch it you mention the budget and anyone who does, if you just do very basic research into how they make this film, this is proper guerrilla filmmaking. They just had like cameras stuck on bits of wood and running through the forest and all, all that kind of stuff is just like, but yeah, as you said, it doesn't show. It doesn't look like a shit film. You can tell there's just so much creativity that's gone into it. Yeah, I mean, that shot, which I've never seen in any other film apart mm-hmm. from The Evil Dead, The Evil Dead sort of moving through the wood shot. Yeah, yeah. Which is just a camera well, nailed to a block of wood and yeah. then just running with it. <laughs> and not to go off topic, but uh, I watched um, Bird Box uh, oh, we go. over <laughs> Christmas <laughs> and there's a lot of those kind of like whoosh, whoosh, shots and it's and it's just it's just money and gloss takes mm-hmm. away takes that edge. And um, I think when we watched it most recently, and Tom said, "Oh, that's cool," you know, the the the, the whoosh when it looks at them through the, yeah. the the window and a flash of lightning, and it's that's the little things that um, Sam Raimi, I think it's called like the moosh moosh shot. <laughs> They've got a name for it, and it's just that little bit of um, artistic kind of flair he gives to stuff, and you you don't notice it, but without it, it would be bland. And what's cool <coughs> is me. I really buy into everything in the film. You. I don't feel when, they, when the, I don't feel like it's two men running through the woods with a camera and a bit of wood. I feel like it is a demon sweeping through the trees. It's just everything clicks so well in this film. The the groaning of the I guess they're demons. Let's call them demons for now. Mm. Um, and the swooshing, it all moves so well. I just think it's um very well put together. Yeah, I mean, what I would say about. <coughs> And Scott dies in the back. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, Scott. That's because I bad mouth bird box and the demons oh, are out no, to get there me. You go. Sorry. Um, that's all right. I actually thought it was quite average. I didn't mind it at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really like those shots as well. I think this film is so well shot. Mm-hmm. It is, like Scott said, and I agree with this, is like if you're being picky, say you only look at it from a story perspective, the story is very thin. Yeah. If you, if you look at it, it's basically five people, they go to a cabin in the woods. And then they find something, and then they don't really do anything. And you know, apart from Ash, who, like we mentioned, and we'll go on to this in a little bit, he's basically not the Ash of Evil Dead Two, or especially Army of Darkness. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because this is definitely, and I'm going to sound so fucking pretentious saying mm-hmm. this, but whatever. It's a very auteurist film. It's a film that's definitely been shaped by its director. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so you've got sort of all the creative shots. So one of my favourite shots is the shot that goes um, from behind Bruce Campbell's head 
all the way to the front. So yeah. it literally flips 180 degrees over his head. I think that's really clever. A shot with the mirror, like I mentioned. The various different tracking shots. One of my favourite shots is where the demon is looking through the different windows outside the cabin. Yeah, yeah. So it goes from Cheryl to Scotty and... Shelley and then it goes to Ash I think or I can't remember the exact order but that's really good and I like the sound design as well I think the sound design is awesome especially uh, like with the uh, yeah that noise the film feels very alive yeah like I like when doors are swinging open I feel I can you know you can almost feel the breeze and feel the speed of things and when things start to get really grotesque and well there's blood spewing and pus spewing it's very <laughs> horrid you can yeah. feel it you can feel <laughs> the, the qualia if you will to be pre- equally as pretentious yeah. you can feel the feel it's, mm. you know which you don't get yeah. with any you know there may be other films that have more gore but you don't feel it yeah it's got you know. dirt under its fingernails isn't it yeah it's, yeah yeah, um, within the woods, even more so because that was made for even less money than this, if you can mm-hmm. believe it. Mm-hmm. And within the woods, it's actually quite interesting. So, how they justify the demon possession in that is the old, it's an Indian burial ground. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, Bruce Campbell accidentally digs something up and then he gets possessed, oh. basically. That's so, it's Indian burial grounds for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck with Indian, Indian burial guys. That's such a bad reputation, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but they have a much, much more creative way of justifying it in this. Mm-hmm. In this, and what I like about this is, with a lot of low budget films, there's way too much exposition, mm-hmm. or there's way too much characters talking when they can't really act because it's a low budget <laughs> film. Whereas in this, they have literally the bare minimal amount of exposition. And the way the exposition is delivered is actually quite clever because it's on the recording mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You don't have characters having these like really weird conversations that you wouldn't have in everyday life. I love like, those bullshit I conversations. I heard about this yeah. well, 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 20,000 years ago yeah. or whatever. You know, like the classic example, going off topic slightly, you know, like Wayne's World when the limo driver explains <laughs> yeah. everything that's going to happen and you're like, it's a good thing he was there to tell us everything. So yeah, you're right. In this, they had the, the, the recording. The recording is just literally the, the professor the archaeologist say right this is all you need to this know this is literally you all know. you need to know exactly and just to briefly go off topic again you were saying like yeah it doesn't matter that this doesn't have much of a story or much character development to go slightly off topic if you were to talk about a film like Suspiria it's very similar of it's a, such a beautifully crafted film that it doesn't matter that it's a ballet school run by witches <laughs> you know it's some films are not about their story some films are, are it's they're beautifully well constructed yeah. and that's good enough and I know? think that's a really good um, comparison like the when you're if you watch Suspiria and she's going to the airport um, she's she, uh, she's arrived at the airport and she gets to the cab and uh, when she's walking even when she's just walking through the airport departure mm. gates just the music and the rain you know she's going to a bad place yeah. and equally when you see those guys driving in they're they're in the car and they're having yucks and moonshine <laughs> and then just a very silent what drive mm. with no dialogue up to the cabin and the the thump of the um the hanging chair yeah it's again it's show not tell it's building up and you're thinking this isn't going to be good (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. now i suppose i tried asking this to ria when we covered this uh, film on the willamette configuration but i mean this film like we mentioned only cost three hundred and fifty thousand dollars mm-hmm but there are so many low-budget films now that are nowhere near as good as this. Yeah. So why is this one so much better? Is it purely because of Sam Raimi, or is there more to it than that? Yeah, I think it's... Um, anyone can make a... I say anyone can make a film. I haven't made a film. But <laughs> anyone can make a film now. And if, you know, we were going to go out and grab a bunch of, you know, entry-level equipment, or just even our iPhones mm-hmm. or what have you, we can make a fairly standard film. But I think he had a vision, and he and it was kind of like, a, how do we film this? How do we do this? Mm-hmm. So, still strapping things to a bit of woods, beating the hell out of Bruce Campbell, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> quite Get, a lot. Yeah, yeah, getting his little brother to do stuff. It was, mm-hmm. it's kind of like it's got a real sense of camaraderie, and you can tell that they're not having a good time, and they're going through some very harrowing, freezing cold, being covered in sticky syrup. Mm-hmm. But they're all, they're all obviously, they would walk away. 
um, if they didn't know, if they didn't have this love and camaraderie, then I think that's what helps make the film as well. There's a lot of times you see people and you think, oh, they look like they're having a good time. It's like, yeah, they shouldn't be having a good time because this one's bloody terrible. <laughs> yeah, Mark Commode has that thing, like the better a time that the people had making the film, the worse the film. That's a good theory. You know, um, if you compare it to, say, something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, apparently that was a fucking nightmare to make. Oh, yeah, yeah. The heat, the smell of the meat, um, rotting. Um, if you, you know, there's various contradictory um, um, anecdotes about the film, about like when she gets her finger cut, apparently she didn't know that was going to happen, so when she's screaming, apparently that's real, like, <laughs> proper suffering. Couldn't believe that. Suffering yeah. for your art. Filmmaking, maybe now it's all quite paint by numbers. Everyone's seen Evil Dead a thousand times and they're trying to replicate it. Whereas when when they were making that film, I don't think the film would have worked without Sam Raimi because he proper yeah. MacGyvered his way through this movie. Uh, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. go, how am I going to make this shot? Yeah. Um, I'm going to do this. Fuck it. We'll just have to, as you say, tie this thing to a bit of word or yeah. you're just going to have to get punched in the face, Bruce. Sorry. Well, well, there's, <laughs> that, there's a bit you don't even think twice about where uh, Ash swings around and fires a shotgun through a, a glass window. <laughs> yeah. and, and Sam was like, yep, that's real glass and that's a real shotgun being fired at a real cameraman. <laughs> yeah, well, you couldn't make this now, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah. and, and just again to go slightly off topic I think I've said this to you before <laughs> Greg with regards to um, Roger Corman films um, when he does all the dream sequences in all his Edgar Allan Poe adaptations he, he kind of he said in interviews I had to kind of do that because I couldn't do it any other way so mm-hmm. I had to improvise so people like Sam Raimi and Roger Corman the reason why they're held up as these great auteurs of cult cinema it's because they can improvise and make something good. And not everyone can. And maybe that's why some low-budget films suck and some other ones are good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely, i say, just the amount of ingenuity just in the shots, mm-hmm. really, more than anything else. Because it's a cabin, they've got a smoke machine, they've got a really good smoke machine. Clearly, <laughs> yeah. it's... Just one of them actually smoking, they said, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, um, yeah, just the... the now, it's quite interesting. So I find the makeup quite good, even mm-hmm. though it's clearly low budget. They probably have better, in inverted yeah. commas, makeup now. And they were talking about sort of the contact lenses, how they could only wear them for 15 minutes at a time because they're really bulky. Horrible. They sound horrible. Yeah. yeah. I hate contact lenses. <laughs> yeah, especially with, like, no running water on set. Yeah. Um, they, in the uh, director's commentary, didn't they say they had to wash their hands with coffee? Yeah. yeah. Like, fucking hell. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, good times. Yeah, good times. <laughs> but I really like the big kind of uh, death scene at the end, mm-hmm. the claymation scene. I really like that. It reminds me of Trapdoor <laughs> quite a bit, actually. Got a bit of Trapdoor, a bit of basket case thrown in, you know, yeah. that kind of, yeah. 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 Um, but it looks, well, I mean, it's not, how am I going to put this? Like, you can look at it and kind a of bit think, ropey. well, it looks a yeah. bit ropey. Yeah, it's a bit, you know, rough around the edges. But I think it offers the film a certain charm. Oh, definitely. I think... Um, I, I don't have a problem with the remake, but if you were to compare the two, perhaps now things are too clean and polished and too good. And that little ropiness, that gives it its edge, as yeah. you say. Um, and also, you know, again, demonic possession. It can, it, can look whatever, like, it can look whatever the fuck it wants to look like. Yeah. I don't know what somebody transforming from a... a <laughs> basically a zombie into a demon is going to look like you can make it look whatever you want yeah and a CG if you did that like in a CG it probably would be different shades of brown better would be worse slime. but this is it's yeah. quite primary colours isn't it like I think that's the trapdoor thing you see, you see turquoises and reds and mm-hmm. goopy yellows and you know it's great and like I said earlier but I, because I my thing about saying like you can sort of feel the film because it is that kind of stop motion animation claymation it, you can feel it a little bit more than if it mm. were just Polish, yeah, polish CGI or insanely good special effects. It's tactile. Yeah, it's yeah. The word that I like. I yeah. like. I like the the guy who did this. And if you compare it to like Tom Tom Savini stuff, mm. you know, all that kind of shit, old school special effects. Yes, it's a little bit ropey, but that gives it its charm, as you say. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think if you watch a film from the seventies or the eighties, because of how it's been shot. It's got that low-budget feel, which makes it feel more real. Yeah. Mm. Even if the things that happen in the film aren't real at all, mm-hmm. couldn't happen. Yeah. yeah. It does feel more real, especially because it's you know it's an exploitation film. Mm-hmm. It's you got no big stars in it at all. They could be anyone, so they're not pretty kind of famous people who you know could be a model mm. basically. Whereas now, I mean, not to disparage sort of modern horror films because I like quite a few modern mm-hmm. horror films now, but. 
because everything is so clean and so polished, there's no way you could mistake it for like a real thing at all. Whereas mm -hmm. here, you know, it could be, you know, someone shooting something on an actual camera, almost and like you a have home to video. Sort of, you have to admire the effort it took to make that claymation thing. You watch it and you're just like, wow, somebody's yeah. painstakingly done yeah. a hundred different shots just to make that bubble burst or that bit of... Yeah, it's, not, it's out, not like you know? an easy get out, is yeah. it? No. And like they were saying about the... Um, when the leg, when the Achilles tendon gets infected, mm -hmm. that's like hand-painted animation. Yeah. That's great. So even if you don't, you know, find it scary or whatever, um, you can still admire it just for the skill. Yeah. Basically, if you laugh at it, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although it's quite interesting you say that. Now, I was going to bring this up in a minute, but uh, you've said... Mm -hmm. um, Tom, I'm pointing at here. The pointing doesn't really work in <laughs> format. This, <laughs> Just realize, this dude. Um, now, you've mentioned quite a few times, it's almost mm -hmm. like, uh, it's one of your stock things, oh, about okay. how Sam Raimi, he had to make this film comedic because he didn't think people would take it seriously as yes. a straight horror film, mm -hmm. which is why the remake is a straight horror film. There yeah. isn't any comedy in it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I don't think this is that funny, though, compared to... Especially to, like, no. Evil Dead 2 or Army yeah. of Darkness. The comedy... There is comedy there, but I don't think it's some laugh riot. You know, I'm not going to yeah. bust my sides watching this. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, a horrid uh, uh, I think uh, I now have to go and <laughs> wash my eyes and mouth out with bleach. I think he put comedy in it so that... Yeah, like I said, so it, it's not it's not buckets of comedy. Mm. He get he does that when he gets to round two, but there's there's enough comedy trickled in that um, he can kind of have his cake and eat it. He can have his because this is a weird in in sort of the category of horror comedies. This is a weird horror comedy because most horror comedies are very nudge nudge wink wink, like you know laugh now. Whereas this, yeah, if you hadn't if you knew nothing about this film and you watched it, you you'd be a little bit confused, as I think the distributors were. You go, am I supposed to be finding this funny or am I supposed to be finding this scary or, or is it a bit of both? So, yeah, it's not like balls to the walls comedy, waka waka. But, <laughs> waka, waka, waka. <laughs> but um, it's definitely, he's definitely having his cake and eating it. Yeah, it's a Free Stooges style of comedy we don't really get in this country. And as the, as the series progresses, mm. he's clearly listened to the people and the people liked the comedy elements and that's why two is basically one but with more comedy and <laughs> three is fucking batshit crazy. All Three Stooges yeah. comedy in that third yeah. one. Yeah, and also, like, Bruce Campbell isn't particularly funny in this one, is No, he? no, no, yeah. He plays it's... dead straight, and obviously they didn't know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. But the humour, I think... When I said, like, if you laugh at it, you're an idiot. I think if you laugh at it derisively, like, oh, look yeah. how silly, like, look, oh, you don't, you, you're not getting it. But it's a film to be laughed along with. It's the the... the, the the whole thing is like it's like in Texas Chainsaw where the grandpa's dropping the mallet. What he's yeah. trying to do is horrible, yeah. but you're shrieking with laughter, <laughs> and um, and just like in, when they're getting possessed and they're laughing at Ash, I find I find that creepy. It's just as creepy as like relentless screaming, like yeah. weird, off, yeah. uncanny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, yuck, yuck. Mm. <laughs> Um, now, it's quite interesting. So you brought up the remake. Yes. Now, what I have heard you review this film before. Yeah. And one of the things that you said, which is quite interesting, is that you know people who watch the remake who yes. love this film, mm -hmm. and they didn't like the remake. Yeah. And the consensus was they didn't like the remake because it was straight, yes. like, serious. It was no comedy in it. Yeah. Now, I... <laughs> I kind of agree with that, but th that is like a surface level thing for mm -hmm. me. What I think that the remake doesn't have, and I quite like the remake. I yeah. don't dislike the remake at all. I think it has certain things that are really, really good in it. It's quite well directed, mm -hmm. I think, is that this film is really intense. This has a certain level of intensity that very, very few other films have at mm -hmm. all, particularly in horror. Like It's pretty relentless, the mm. tension, especially even when things aren't happening on screen, like people, you know, getting their limbs cut off yeah. or stabbed or set on fire, etc. There's a lot of tension because you don't know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of really actual good jump scares in this. Yeah. That I think anyway. Um, so, yeah, so that's my thing. It's that the, the remake, although it's okay, it doesn't have the same level of intensity mm -hmm. as this one. And that's kind of what lets it down. I think... In, in terms of why people didn't like the remake, I think the comedy, the lack in comedy, isn't the main reason why people didn't 
people who don't like it didn't like it. I think it's that's more secondary. I think the first reason is hardcore fanboys not liking the concept of a remake, period. I think that's the first reason why people were turned off by it. Yes, it doesn't have the comedy, but I don't think that's the major thing. I think because the first one is a no-budget film, they don't give a fuck about offending people. <laughs> Whereas totally. with the remake, I'm, you know, it's in the hands of Hollywood. It has to be a little bit more polished and more crowd-pleasing and therefore safer. So even though it has lots of gore and some fucked up deaths, it maybe loses that tension that the original one has because the original didn't have any boundaries. And also the original, as we've said, because everything's a bit more gritty because of the nature of the fact it was low budget and you can feel the co- you can feel the actors are cold and you can feel their pain when they're yeah. out, you know. And Bruce Campbell shooting at the cameraman with a, with a rifle <laughs> and stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of tension in the original for many different reasons. Hmm. Right. Which you will get in a low-budget yeah. film anyway, yeah. just because you have to be in- ingenuity or intuitive, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, this is obviously worst date movies. Now, there is only really one scene in particular that stands out as to why someone might not think this is a very good date movie, and that is the tree rape scene. Now... I know it's got. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I was hoping you hand me that. Yeah. Now I, because it's a tree, or it's the the forest itself. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I speak in your grave, no. or anything like that. Yeah. It's not exactly pleasant, but it doesn't bother me. I think that's how they probably try to get around it, because it's you know she's got well a branch up her vagina Mm -hmm. I guess literal terms anyway um, interesting when I reviewed this before with Rhea Rhea Fend my co-host on the the Lament Configuration she had a big problem with this and that's why she thought the film probably should have been a video nasty anything kind of sexual sexual violence Mm -hmm. related she Mm -hmm. had a problem with Um, but anyway what do you guys think about this I mean I think the secret self is quite imaginative I can see why maybe they wouldn't want to put this in a film now. Although quite interesting that in the remake, they do have a very similar scene to this in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not as blatant, if you put it that way, but it's still a character being attacked by the forest, getting you know tied up by branches that have come to life and then being violated in some way, although you don't actually see mm. it in this time. Yeah, I think it's just... Um, watching it again, It's quite. it has quite an impact and the, the effect of making the audience uncomfortable is definitely achieved. It's quite impactful and it's quite, you, you, you kind of, it's just like the, um, the, the kind of more real, like everyone's like caught themselves on a, on a thistle or, a, or a branch or it's been scratched. And you know, the, the actress, it was actually scratched and hurt and fr- frozen. So it was a, she's like, you know, Sam Raimi said, she was a real trooper because you know, <laughs> most people say like, no way. Um, and, um, yeah, you you know what it's like to you know uh, to get you know you know uh, injured like falling on it, it bloody hurts and it's just and, it, and it's that kind of it, the fantastical is happening mm-hmm. this would never happen but you you also you, you know what it's like if you get like you know if you imagine like a rose thorn scratching you near the eye you're, <laughs> you, you you still got that kind of you recoil it and um, the shot with the branch just heading straight for her was made to people sit up and go whoa we're not in Kansas anymore this mm-hmm. is they're not messing around. I think post then they've kind of said, well, it's kind of like, I liken it to um, say like how the Beastie Boys a- a- apologize or like for the lyrics in their first album being like quite misogynistic. And, and like, oh, we were playing characters. And I think there is a sense of like, they were playing a role like, oh, what can we do to out Craven? Mm-hmm. Where's Craven? What can we, <laughs> yeah. how can we freak people out? And sexual violence is like mm-hmm. one of those things. Um, I don't sit there thinking, oh, this is one of my favourite things. I, I kind of, I've kind of like, I don't really like the scene either. I mean, I like the way it's, I can't, it's still can't figure out the way it's done, but I'm kind of like, uh, you're just like a bunch of guys going, <laughs> you mm. know, uh, and they, they've said it's a bit sniggering, a bit crass, and they wouldn't do it again, which, like Greg said, I don't understand why they did it in the remake. If Sam Raimi was like, one of the things I would change about Evil Dead is that scene for the reasons we kind of mentioned and was mentioned on your earlier show. And I don't know why they, with going back to the remake, I don't know why that needs remaking if the person who was kind of, is he executive producing it? I think he yeah, is. Yeah. He pretty much said, I didn't yeah. like that. And for me, the, just to take it back to the remake, the problem I had is that um, 
why would I want to see an Evil Dead film without Ash? And it's like, um, he's kind of like the flip of Michael Myers, Jason, Freddy. He's not the bad guy killing him, but he's the... You don't go and see an Evil Dead film. You, yeah, the makeups are great, but you don't get disappointed if a certain Evil Dead or a Deadite isn't in it. <laughs> yeah. um, that's the problem they've got um, with remaking it. And obviously the TV show is kind of like... Everyone's kind of like okay with the remake now because the TV show gave us like hours and hours and hours of what the fanboys wanted. <laughs> <laughs> mm. In terms of the, the, the tree rape scene, it okay, if you can okay, you mentioned I spit in your grave. If you think about other controversial rape scenes in films such as straw dogs and things like that, the rape is integral to the story. Mm. Whereas here, there's just a tree rape. If you were to take it out, mm. it wouldn't matter so so in that sense i think that's why people talk about it so much well when i say that's the reason what i mean is it doesn't need to be there so therefore it's kind of like why did you bother no. and by the sounds of it you they've said since yeah we didn't really need that and so we've we've kind of we're stuck with a rape scene we didn't really want no you know? it's obviously titillation isn't it and it um, by the sounds of it in the director's commentary um, when they were making it because I think they said they shot it over several days and, yeah, and basically when realize, they put it all together yeah. it was more intense mm. than they had intended it to be um, so therefore they kind of maybe they don't regret so much the rape scene but how intense it was because mm. um, in actual fact most of that rape scene isn't, isn't the rape the actual like penetration yeah. is instant and then it's over it's all the tying up and stuff mm. so it's it's an uncomfortable scene that by the sounds of it didn't need to be there and they didn't intend for it to be so uncomfortable it's a bit of a bit of a mess yeah i mean what i was going to say is that's the i mean uh, so that character gets possessed mm -hmm. following that but yeah. all the other characters that get possessed it seems to happen like out the blue out of nowhere like, i think like they, they're so almost like zombie possession they get stabbed like basically there has to be some kind of they get bit Penetration. or, or yeah. stuff, you know, where she's the only one, as you say, who doesn't. So that, it, it's... In, yeah. in something like I spend your grave, and I don't want to say you can justify the rape, but the rape is integral to what happens in the well, storyline, whereas the rape here is just stuck in it's just for an immature joke. Yeah. 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 So you could almost call this like a body horror film in a way, because people's flesh is being contorted and changed based on what happens yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, it's not a body horror film in the same way that like Tetsuo is or the same way that like Videodrome is no. but you can kind of there's undertones yeah should mm. we say okay cool I mean other than that I mean the only other things I can think of that might not make it a good date movie is just like I said the intensity of the film itself mm -hmm. because it's all oh, it's intense man and also there are certain scenes that are quite violent like one of the characters when they're possessed cut or bites their own hand off <laughs> for example and stuff like that Okay, um, so is this everyone's favourite Evil Dead movie or do you prefer Evil Dead 2? That is a bloody good question. Oh, me of I, darkness. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I, I was really regret... Um, I was really, like, not looking forward to that question because I flip-flop all the time from oh, one no, to two. Tom. One to two, back and forth. Solid three, like the Spider-Man movies. <laughs> I always go for the third. <laughs> Terminator 3, Spider-Man 3. Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th, Part 3 in 3D. I sense you're mocking <laughs> the thirds. Um, it's, okay, it's funny that, um, as you've picked up on, Sam Raimi's I, has said at various points, if the remake was me making it the way I kind of would do if I had a big budget. He, but he's kind of done that before when he did Evil Dead 2. Because that's basically, a, I mean, um, yeah. I mean uh, what is Evil Dead yeah. Two? Like, you know, that's that's an ongoing question. That's a perhaps a follow up question. <laughs> what is Evil Dead Two? Is it a reboot, a remake, a reimagine? You know, take your pick. I mean, but he he kind of already had his remake with Evil Dead Two, um, and in some ways, a lot of the cool stuff you remember, as you were saying about Ash and miss people misremembering Ash, it's not an Evil Dead. You an Evil Dead Two, you get pretty much all the cool shit from Evil Dead. <laughs> Hmm. But then some more, and you get like the cool chainsaw stuff, and the yeah. hand, and all the catchphrases, and, and moose head, and all that stuff. and moose head. When you see evil, like my mind also gets the two confused hmm. at various bits. So the first one, when they open the door, and you see the moose head. You yeah. think, oh, that's the moose head that's going to laugh. No, it fucking isn't. That no, happens in part two. Yeah, you know? well, yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. So, um, so you get all the cool stuff in the second one. But then when I go back and watch the first one, I'm like, ah, oh, it's, 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 is it because it's the first one you, you kind of feel obliged yeah. to like it more? 
Because Ash is quite mm. a weedy, weak character. He's proper shit, isn't yeah. he? He can, he can get defeated. He can get de- de- defeated by a very lightweight bookcase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On more than one occasion. Yeah, uh, uh, until everyone else dies, he's not stepping up at all. He's straight <laughs> up, I'm sitting in the corner. <laughs> Yeah, this is slightly pre sort of slasher explosion. So mm-hmm. the final girl wasn't really a proper thing yet at this point. And I think the way that the female characters are presented, not to go all like, oh, you know, misogynistic <laughs> or whatever, but like the female characters are quite thin. So mm-hmm. the only character who you think could possibly be the hero is Scotty. Yeah, yeah really. Scotty is the hero of the film, basically. basically. He Until speaks a lot of sense. Yeah. He's got a good name, too. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, until, but yeah, like you said, about halfway through the film, and then it has to be Ash, and he's kind of having to do it by default because everyone mm-hmm. else is possessed or dead. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he doesn't really do a lot before then. He kind of like, he's just like mooning over his girlfriend, buying her trinkets, hiding yeah. in the corner. <laughs> People are screaming in terror, in like pain, and he's just sat there. Yeah. And just, yeah, it's, it's, I like, I like it's the, maybe the filmmakers were kind of like, yeah. We're going to make... Bruce thinks he's going to be the big all act, you know, horror star. And for the first half of it, you know, the, 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 the interesting point is like seeing this for the first time without seeing it through the lens of like VHS or mm-hmm. you know, being able to go straight into Evil Dead 2 or Army of Darkness. And not ha- or, you know, you would, if you'd seen, say, like the comics or the video games, oh, I'd check out the original. Watching the um, original uh, Evil Dead cold not knowing anything about anything which is kind of impossible yeah. now you'd be like come on scotty he's got the axe <laughs> he's got the plan and you'd just be like oh kill this guy in the blue shirt he's just a complete blast <laughs> why is he lasting so long i mean he basically it's funny you mentioned the final girl thing he does the final girl thing mm. or where the final girl is always a pretty much a, a wet blanket right up until the last third where she f- grows a pair and starts <laughs> taking on taking on it's the like killer yeah. taking, on, taking on the killer and that's basically what Ash is doing I mean you know Ash is even there's a thing there's a lot written on um, Final Girls and how they often have um, what's the word it's Men, in, Women in, and in, Chainsaws by Carol J. Cole yeah she writes something about yeah. their names are always things like Ash because they can be interchangeable as both a man uh, and a woman's uh, name mm. so he is kind of a Final Girl Final Boy he follows a lot mm. of the tropes that you get. Um, I was going to say something else. Oh, just in, in defence of the second film as well, you mentioned about the character we've mentioned several times about the characters in the first one being very thin. The characters in the second film are great. That redneck yeah. and Bobby Joe. <laughs> Bobby Joe! Bobby Joe! <laughs> like, you love those characters in the second yeah. film. They're hilarious. You yeah. want them to die. Um, they're just brilliant, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and it's proper scary, the second one as the well. The second one has pr- proper scares. Um loads of cool just 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 fucking awesome yeah. moments in the I think one. you think you've got to have evil two uh, evil two evil two deads <laughs> evil two two dead to evil starring uh <laughs> steven seagal and uh, dmx uh no, you, you've got to have that as the top one because basically everything you know is in that one a bit like say like nightmare three mm. everything mm. you think you love about freddy is in that film not necessarily in one yeah. two or any of the ones it's coming to you yeah, it's kind of <laughs> three, four. <laughs> hmm. Uh, yeah, but I would say yeah, it's got it's got all, it's it's everything is there, isn't it? My my favorite, I think, Evil Dead scene is in Evil Dead Two, and it's the mm. one where he's picking up the plates and smashing them on his head. Yeah, if you watch that scene, he's like he's such a good body actor, body comedy actor, yeah. Bruce Campbell, because he's you. It is like his arm is completely independent of him and he's fighting against it yeah. and he kind of temporarily falls down but so it's almost like something's pulling him up. He's so fucking good in that film. Mm. He's, he's good in, in the first one but as we've said he's actually weak as fuck yeah. in the first one. The second one his body <laughs> comedy is so fucking oh, chaplain oh, no, he, three stooges yeah. but all condensed into one person. He does do a good job of making sure he can't lift the bookcase off himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like hugging that bookcase for dear life. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I do flip-flop between the two, but um, I, as controversial as it is, I would say the second one, you know. Okay. Second I, one's the best, yeah. and uh, Army of Darkness is... Uh, totally I, fucking... I love Army of Darkness. I just look, because it's basically, if, <laughs> if someone's turned around, like, say it didn't exist, and you read the, um, you know, the lies and rumours on the internet of what films are coming out, and there was like, oh, Sam Raimi is going to do like a Ray Harryhausen-esque <laughs> fantasy uh, horror film starring Bruce Campbell, you'd be like... Holy shit, that sounds fucking awesome. <laughs> but I think, again, it's because it didn't give people what they wanted necessarily, but like you've already done the same film twice. You've got to do something <laughs> quite fucking different. 
<laughs> and yeah, it's kind of like you know, like we say about Gremlin. Yeah. I think we're talking about Gremlins just as much as we're talking about <laughs> Evil Dead. Yeah, Gremlins too. If anyone, like, in that, that production meeting, mm. going, right, one of the gremlins is going to be made of electricity, one of them's going to be made out of fruit. And one's going to be a sexy lady. One's going to be a sexy lady. And you're just like, it's so, two is so different from one. Yeah. And Army of Darkness is so different. Yeah. You can watch that film without watching... I mean, could you imagine yeah. somebody mistaking the film franchise and watching the first Evil Dead and then Army of Darkness and going, what the fuck happened to Ash? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell's going on and, here? And the thing is, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's this little group of films like pre-internet films like uh, Army of Darkness, uh, Ghostbusters 2, Gremlins 2 and maybe Die Hard 2 that I always thought were fucking great and everyone goes, no, they're all fucking awful. They stink. They don't make sense. They don't, they don't. It's like, hang on. And then, and then they get reappraised by the second generation of people and mm. we go, I always fucking like them. What's wrong with it? Yeah, stop what, complaining. Yeah. What is your consensus, Greg, on on Evil Dead Two? Is it a remake? Because a lot of people go, "It's not a remake," and it's not a reimagining, and it's not a reboot. I'm like, "Well, you, can you please tell me what the fuck it is then?" Nobody seems to be able to categorize Evil Dead Two. Okay, I mean, my opinion on Evil Dead Two is that it's technically a better movie mm-hmm. than the first one. I kind of prefer the first one. If I had to watch one or the other right now I'd probably mm-hmm. watch the first one even though we've literally just watched it <laughs> I'd probably watch it again although the second one is fucking great as well in terms of what it is I'm going to have my cake and eat it too and I'm going <laughs> to say that it's both a remake and a sequel at the same time because the first five minutes of Evil Dead 2 is kind of a remake of the first one it's like just in case you haven't seen the first Evil Dead this is basically what happens yeah. <laughs> it's like it's actually a bunch of people it's him and his girlfriend his girlfriend gets possessed Boom, and then it's like almost like a totally new mm-hmm. story afterwards. So, I, I would, I would yeah. stick the label of re reimagining to it. I think you love years, that reimagining tag, don't you? For, well, for years nobody really knew how to describe a film that was like. I think, I think Tim Byrne invented the term reimagine mm. when he did his Planet of the Apes, uh, yes. and everyone went, "This isn't fucking Planet of the Apes. What is this?" He went, "It sort of is. It's kind of like reimagined it and." A film so, that Sam Raimi was <laughs> uh, asked to direct before Tim Byrne. Oh, yeah. there you go. I thought, think that would be quite good, actually. Well, I have got a little game, <laughs> if we can quickly interject with... Uh, of course. I've got some films that, in the <laughs> Evil Dead Companion, which is uh, a book I got free when I was working You've at... got for free. I'm doing a better well, quotation. I was working for, for <laughs> Electronics Boutique, so that's a long time ago. Wow. That, uh, yeah, that's like back, in the old, days. back in the old <laughs> days where games were written out on runes. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were giving when you bought the uh, I think it was the uh, first PlayStation game they gave you this book as a free gift so obviously I've got my staff copy and uh, <laughs> it's staff it's copy. fantastic and uh, right it's got it's got if you can find a copy of it it's yeah, the Evil Dead Companion uh, buy it it still holds up it's brilliant and there's a thing at the back the films Sam Raimi didn't make now if Which I is- Every film if I that he didn't make. Guys, yeah. The title, and this has just come to me, so mm-hmm. we're just working out the kinks, but I think it's gonna work. You guys say bloody good or bloody awful. Right. Now, he is down to I'll ask Greg for this one first. Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery, which went on to be made by Jay Roach. Would that be bloody good or bloody awful? Sam Raimi's Austin Powers. I can't imagine that, so I'd say bloody awful. Yeah, you know, Tom. Bloody awful. I mean, yeah. let's not forget he did direct Spider Man 3. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the scale of Sam yeah. Raimi. Evil yeah. Dead 2 or Spider Man 3. Now, here's <laughs> one. Here's one for you, Tom, because it features Nicolas Cage, who is oh, your, okay. your favourite actor. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah. knows that. So, yeah. buy Tom Nicolas Cage stuff, everyone. Oh, Send it to the show. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, get on with uh, it. <laughs> face off. Sam Raimi's face off. <laughs> I think. I think Face Off is perfect the way it is, <laughs> okay. but I would love to see Sam Raimi's uh, bloody good. A reimagining. Yeah, a reimagining. There you, you go. What, what do you reckon, Greg? Um, I think that'd be awesome. It's just yeah. I can't imagine Sam Raimi directing like fight scenes. So no. John Woo works really well for those kind of scenes, but for the batshit insanity, <laughs> yeah, I would like to see has, that. Has Sam, yeah. Raimi, has Sam Raimi ever directed Nicolas Cage in anything? Just because anything? Um, that's, that's a match has. made in heaven. Yeah. Fucking it, Bruce Campbell no. and Nicolas Cage in a scene out out insane in each other would be brilliant. Well, there is an unmade <laughs> film of uh, Dracula from a script by Kevin Jar. I think that's how you pronounce it. Right. As yet unmade. So maybe that could be the... If they're listening, guys. Fucking Bruce Campbell's Dracula, Nicolas Cage's Renfield. Right. 
Done. <laughs> well, well, a couple more here. Uh, let's have a look. What have we got? What's interesting? Apparently, actually said. Uh, um, okay, here we go, Greg. Sam Raimi's Sleepy Hollow. When he mentioned Tim Burton, so mm, no, I, I don't. I'm not a massive fan of that film, but it's very Tim Burton. But that could just be the way he did it. He did it mm. as a Tim Burton <clears throat> film. I just can't imagine... That's the tipping point yeah. in Tim Burton's career. That film's not good, but it's not awful. But from that point onwards, everything's a shitter version of Sleepy Hollow in Tim yeah, Burton's yeah. career. <laughs> um, I would say bloody good. Because yeah. I imagine that would be a bit like Drag Me to Hell. Yeah, yeah. And finally, this one to Tom first. Last Action Hero. <laughs> Sam Raimi, Last Action Hero. Oh, God. Bloody awful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that film, I don't even like Last Action Hero, really, but yeah, I don't think anyone can improve that. No. Well, there you go. Like, uh, awful, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen Last Action Hero for years, in fairness, so I don't know. Cool. Um, so, in terms of The Evil Dead, so the original, um, I'm well, we all like the film, so instead of rating the film out of five, basically, we recommend the film. Um, it's a good film, yeah. Yeah, so if you haven't seen it for any reason, please fucking watch it. Mm. Now, in terms of whether it's a good date movie or a bad date movie, I'm going to post this in a slightly different way from when you guys have been on the show before. Mm -hmm. So would you say it's a good date movie or a bad date movie? Good. I'd say it's good. I think it's it's fun. I think think there have probably been many examples of this being used as a date movie. Mm. I think everyone watches this film as a teenager yeah. with boys boys and girls. Um, with people yeah. your age at the time. Let me phrase that yeah. a little bit better. I think, it, <laughs> I think it is a standard date movie. I think it, it's done the rounds many a time. Uh, and I think like when they said they were, when they're making it, um, 25% of revenue came from the driving. So it would have Which been... Which is date movie territory. Yeah, mm. I think it's... The ultimate date movie. Yeah, the, there you go. The ultimate date movie, and it's past the test, as you say. Twenty five yeah. revenue coming from drive throughs, yeah. which is all just about couples and you know the guy laughing at it, uh, laughing uh, off that he's not scared, and the girl pretending she's scared, and <laughs> everyone, sh- as they said in the again director's commentary, people shouting at the screen, "You stupid idiot!" You know, don't go up there. You know, it's it's a great date movie. You know, yeah, I did a poll on Twitter. Uh, at worst date movies basically sort of asking if this was a good date movie or a bad date movie and the overwhelming consensus was that it was a good date movie excellent well I think if, if I was using you've done it Greg you've well done, the nail on the head yeah. yeah other than the tree rape you basically can yeah. get away watching it it's quite intense and it's fairly violent mm-hmm. but other than that tree rape scene it's a really, really good horror film, and I think, yeah, you would get sort of the desired reaction out of people. It would de- generally scare people. Um, I've got quite an interesting sort of little story. It's quite weird. Um, there's a girl that I used to go out with many years ago, and she didn't really watch horror movies. The only horror movies she would ever watch were horror comedies. She hmm. said the only re- way she could watch a horror movie is if there were was comedy in it. So he, she liked Shaun of the Dead and Evil right. Dead and Evil Dead Two. Yeah, they were like the ones that she she could watch. So yeah, so she would happily watch this, in spite of a couple of things maybe in it that you know. Yeah, like I said, the tree rate, but haven't aged well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if for whatever reason you don't own this on DVD or Blu-ray, so the version that we watch is Region Two Anchor Bay, Mm -hmm. which I have somewhere. Now Mm -hmm. the version that Tom has got. It's the lagfall. This I don't know now. I'm holding up to the radio. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Look into your speakers. <laughs> imagine, close your eyes and imagine that you have like a book of the dead uh, with DVDs yeah, in with it. Yeah, with DVDs. And then for some reason it comes with a free copy of Running Time. So Bruce Campbell. Wow. <laughs> they must have had a lot of those knocking around the warehouse. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. And has that got all three films in it? No, that's, that's just, it's all this effort just for the one film. Well, two films if you include Running Time. <laughs> 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 and that came out quite a few years ago. This is it? old. This is probably quite expensive yeah. now and um, to track down. But it's even in the books designed by the guy that did the original special effects on the film, T. Yeah. Sullivan. Right. Tom, it hasn't Tom really Sullivan. deteriorated. No, yeah, yeah, normally this kind of robbery rotten. stuff falls apart. I mean, well, maybe we'll get a picture of this on your on, yeah, on the Twitter on the feed. Twitter. But um, yeah, 
this this was a thing for years. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's made of actual human flesh and it's skin. Very, it's very squishy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it smells nice a bit funny. Yeah, give it, it squeeze. It is very give squishy, squeeze. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Squishy and smells funny. That's me. <laughs> yes. Um, now, yes. <laughs> if you can't get that version, because it, it looks fucking awesome, I'm not going to lie. The best version, apparently, to get on DVD is a Region 1 Anchor Bay Ultimate Edition bum, of bum, The Evil oh. Dead. Or if you can get all three films in a box set, obviously I recommend. Now, very interesting little side note is it is also available from Sony, but it's been tweaked by Sam Raimi. So oh. there were, in the director's commentary, he mentioned a couple of things that maybe he didn't like or he think looked that good. So, for example, there's a scene near the beginning where the car's going over a bridge and you can see someone in the background who you're not meant to see. Yeah. He's cut that out. So it's He's not Lucas like, it. I yes. was just about to say, you can't Lucas films, man. <laughs> well, that's what he's done. So Ooh. if you buy a newer version of this film... Added more Ewoks in the background of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> he's, done, he's not done a full like Ridley Scott and Blade Runner type thing where he's changed yeah. the ending or anything. It's just little things here and there, like a George Lucas, yeah. like you said, where he's tweaked it. So if you don't want that version, if you want the original version, just bear that in mind if you're looking to buy it. But yeah, you can buy it basically... That's my favourite part of the film. Anywhere, yeah, that all guy, over the that world. That guy, yeah. 